Welcome to another Tech Help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I am your instructor, Richard Rost. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to make your combo boxes show last name and first name, last name, comma, first name, in the box when the box is closed. A lot of people say that they can only show one field at a time in that box. Well, I'm going to show you how to put them together. Today's question comes from Olivia from Newark, New Jersey, one of my gold members. Olivia says, I want to make a combo box to select a customer, but the box will only show first name or last name when it's closed, not both. How can I see them both together? Also, I've got a bunch of Smiths and even a few John Smiths. How can I tell them apart when selecting? Well, Olivia, by default, the way that a combo box works is you put two fields in the combo box. The first one is usually hidden, and that's your ID. The second one is the value that will be visible when the combo box is closed. Now, you can easily have multiple fields in the combo box, like first name and last name, but you'll only see them when the box is open, like a list box. So let me show you first how to put them together with a little string concatenation, and then I'll show you how to also display the ID as well, even if you don't want to see it when the box is closed. Now this lesson's got two prerequisites, relational combo boxes, that's making a combo box off of the values in a different table or query, and string concatenation, that's putting two different strings together. If you're not familiar with either of these terms, go watch both of those videos first. I'll put links down below in the links section. Here I am in the Tech Help free template. This is a free download from my website. Again, I'll put a link down below. Now you'll find in this template, I've already done what you're asking for. I did it in my invoicing lesson. If you open up a customer, for example, and go to his orders, you'll see right there's a combo box that does exactly what you want. It's got first name and last name together with a little bit of string concatenation. But just so you don't have to sit through an hour of video for this tip, let me show you exactly how I did it. The key to making it so that both of those fields are together in the combo box is to concatenate them into one field in a query. So go to Create, Query Design. And then in your query, bring in the customer table. Then we can close the field list there. Inside the customer table, bring in the customer ID. We'll need that as the first field. That's going to be for our relationships. Now down below here, I'm going to create a calculated field, and I'm going to put it right here. Let's make a field called LF, which will be last name and first name, colon, last name, and, quote, comma, space, quote, and first name. Just like that. There, I'll zoom in so you can get a good look at it. I'm going to save this as my customer queue, my customer query. And if I run this query now, there's all my customers, last name first. See that? And that's one field. Now, I can't edit this, but I can use this to display it in places like on reports or different forms or combo boxes. In fact, you may even want the reverse, too. You may even want to make a second one over here called FL, like that. Then you can say first name and a space and a last name. You might want to put those together in other places, like in reports. You don't want the gap there between the first name and the last name. If you put together an address label, for example. Now, the key is to use this in your combo box, but if you want, if you have other information that might help you, you mentioned that you have like multiple John Smiths, okay? Maybe throw their address in there or their email address or even use the customer ID if you want to. Whatever other bit of information in here like phone number that you want to use when you open up that box to let you pick which one it is, maybe phone number and state, okay? Or whatever, whatever fields you feel are good for identifying this person or their address. All right, save that. Now let's go back over to that order form. And you can do this on any form you want to. So go to forms, orders over here. Now I took the combo box that I had before off of here. Let's put it back on. Design view. Go to combo boxes up here. All right, there's combo boxes. Drop it there. The wizard's going to start up. I want the combo box to get the values from another table or query. All right, queries. You're going to pick queries. That customer queue that we just created. Next. Now, these are the fields in that query. Customer ID should go first. That's what's bound to the field in the order table. So when I pick a customer, it's going to save the customer ID in whatever field you want in the form below. Now, the second thing you put in there is what do I see when the box is closed? 
That'll be, in this case, last name first. I want to see Kirk, comma, Jim, for example. Then, whatever other helper fields you want can go after that. We don't need FL, so phone and state we can put next. And we'll see those when we open the box up. Hit next. How do you want to sort it? Sort it by last name first. And you can sort it by other fields if you want to. Put all the states together, for example. Next. Now, this is what the fields are going to look like. If you base your combo box off of a table, you'll get a little checkbox here that says hide the key column. But since this is based on a query, we don't see that. We have to hide it manually. How do you hide it manually? We'll just grab the box right here and make it width zero like that. Just make it so it's, you can't even see it anymore. Okay. Then resize these however you want, like that. State can be nice and small. Okay. Hit next. Now, which is the bound field? Which field are we storing in the table below? Well, this form happens to be my order form, okay? And I'm picking a customer, so customer ID, and that's going to get stored in the customer ID on the order form. That's why I wanted you to watch the relational combo boxes video first so you understand that I'm picking a customer from the list of customers in the customer table, and I'm storing that customer ID in the order table using the order form. Okay, that's an important concept. Next, what label do you want? Yeah, customer is fine. And then finish. And there's my box. And of course, Access doesn't bring it in and make it look like the other ones automatically, so we got to change it up here. I'm just going to use the Format Painter. Format Paint. Drop it on there. Resize this guy. Resize it like that. Maybe select these guys. Right-click, size to grid. Get them all lined up on the grid nicely. Okay, let's close that form. Save changes, yes. Let's open it back up again. And there we go. There's my new combo box. Last name first. Drop it down. You can see there's the name right there in the first column. The second column's got the phone number in it. Third column's got the state. And you'll only see these when the box is open, but that'll let you decide which one of those John Smiths to pick. And there you go. That's it. That's how you do it. Very simple. Want to learn more? Well, in the extended cut for members, I show you how to add company name as well. So we'll make the query understand that you might have a company name with only a person's last name, a company name with no first or last name, a company name with just the first name, company name with first and last name, just a first name, just a last name, or a last name, first name with no company name. Those are all the different combinations. We'll cover that in the extended cut for members. How do you become a member? Click the join button below the video. After you click the Join button, you'll see a list of all the different types of membership levels that are available. Silver members and up will get access to all of the extended cut tech help videos, live video and chat sessions, and more. Gold members get access to a download folder containing all the sample databases that I build in my tech help videos, plus my code vault where I keep tons of different functions that I use. Platinum members get all the previous perks, plus access to my full beginner courses and some of my expert courses. These are the full-length courses found on my website, and not just for access. I also teach Word, Excel, Visual Basic, ASP, and lots more. But don't worry, these free tech help videos are going to keep coming. As long as you keep watching them, I'll keep making more. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up, and feel free to post any comments that you have. I do read them all. Make sure you subscribe to my channel, which is completely free, and click the bell icon and select All to receive notifications when new videos are posted. Click on the Show More link below the video to find additional resources and links. You'll see a list of other videos, additional information related to the current topic, free lessons, and lots more. YouTube no longer sends out email notifications when new videos are posted, so if you'd like to get an email every time I post a new video, click on the link to join my mailing list. Now, if you have not yet tried my free Access Level 1 course, check it out now. It covers all the basics of building databases with Access. It's over three hours long. You can find it on my website or on my YouTube channel. And if you like level one, level two is just $1. And it's also free for all members of my YouTube channel at any level. Want to have your question answered in a video just like this one? Visit my tech help page and you can send me your question there. Click here to watch my free access beginner level one course, more of my tech help videos, or to subscribe to my channel. Thanks for watching this video from AccessLearningZone.com.